A very good evening aspirants. I welcome you all to the daily Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date of 14th June 2023. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Now without wasting any time, let's get into our discussion. Look at this article. The Indian Computer Emergency Response Team that is certain has not provided any direct updates on the leak of personal information from Covin platform. Also, no alerts have been issued regarding the potential hacking of Aadhaar or passport numbers. The only information from certain suggests that previously stolen data may have been accessed. A private cyber security firm suggested that the data was not directly taken from Covin but from a health worker. So the article says that transparency in certain investigation is crucial to inspire citizens confidence. In this context let us learn about certain. See certain is an agency that deals with cyber security issues like hacking and phishing. It was formed in 2004 under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So basically certain helps to prevent cyber threats and provide quick response services. They work with government departments, industry associations and even citizens to ensure cyber security. Think of certain as a team that protects our digital world. So they have two main roles, reactive and proactive. Reactively, they respond to incidents and provide support to affected organizations. Proactively, they issue security guidelines and advisories to prevent future attacks. They also analyze trends and collaborate with other organizations to improve cyber security. Now let us understand their functions. C certain has important responsibilities in the field of cyber security. These responsibilities are mentioned in the field of Information Technology Act itself. The first responsibility of certain is to collect, analyze and share information about cyber incidents. They gather data about different cyber attacks and make sure others are aware of them. They also provide forecast and alerts about potential cyber security incidents. This helps organizations and individuals prepare and protect themselves in advance. In case of emergency cyber incidents, certain takes immediate action to handle the situation. They have plans in place to respond quickly and effectively. Another important role of certain is coordinating the response to cyber incidents. They work with different organizations and agencies to make sure everyone is working together to solve the problem. Certain also issues guidelines, advisories and notes to help people understand and follow good security practices. They provide information about how to prevent, respond to and report cyber incidents. Lastly, they may have additional responsibilities as defined by the law. This means that they can perform other tasks related to cyber security as needed. Now, who can report incidents to certain? Basically anyone. This includes system administrators, owners, service providers or even individuals. We can report various types of cyber security incidents like unauthorized access, malware attacks, identity theft and more. These are other incidents that can be reported. Just go through it. Also, if you need to report an incident, you can contact certain through various channels like telephone, fax, email or even postal letters. Certain can collect information related to cyber security incidents from individuals and organizations but they will keep your identity confidential. Also non-compliance with certain directions can have consequences. If someone doesn't follow the directions, certain can file a report and it may even go to court. Also individuals and organizations play a crucial role in cyber security. They should report incidents promptly to certain and regularly audit their security practices to ensure that they meet the prescribed standards. That's all. Now let us move on to our next article. Look at this article from the editorial page. It talks about the recent tensions between India and Canada. It is specifically related to the pro Kalistani parade in Brampton, Canada. It mainly talks about the Canada's perceived support for separatist elements. Also, the article discusses the role of Indian diaspora in Canada's political life and the political implications it has for both the countries. In this context, we will try to analyze the points given in this article. Before that, take a note of the syllabus. See, there is an ongoing tension between India and Canada. This is because there was a parade in Canada that supported the Kalistani movement. We know that this particular movement seeks a separate homeland for Sikhs in India. During this parade, there was a display that showed a woman dressed in a white sari with soldiers pointing guns at her. We know what this represents. India's former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and her assassins. So now the Indian External Affairs Minister Mr. Jay Shankar was asked about this display in a media conference. He 
he didn't directly mention the offensive display but he expressed concern about canada giving space to separatist he said that this isn't good for the relationship between the two countries it is important to note that glorifying the revenge by assassination of a prime minister is a serious matter because this goes beyond politics or personal feelings it affects the dignity of the nation so this is the cause of tension between the two countries now let us talk about the indian diaspora indian diaspora means people of indian origin living in other countries in this case canada see the indian community including sikhs plays an important role in canada's public life some indians are even part of canadian prime minister trudeau's cabinet our external affairs minister even mentioned that canada's indulgence of khalistani elements is influenced by vote bank politics this means that politicians that try to secure votes from certain communities i mention this so that you can understand the influence of the indian diaspora there this has led to many disagreements between india and canada for instance when prime minister justin trudeau commented on indian farmers agitation it was seen as interference in india's domestic affairs the article also mentions how the indian political class has started using the diaspora as a pillar of foreign policy for example prime minister modi's popularity among the diaspora has been used to create a positive image for india internationally other politicians like rahul gandhi from the congress party have also started engaging with the diaspora for political purposes lastly we need to understand the current canadian political situation prime minister trudeau's government depends on the new democratic party for its survival and the leader of the ndp jagmeet singh sympathizes with the khalistan movement he even asked trudeau to intervene in events in punjab related to a radical preacher which was unacceptable to india so these are the main points given in the article now we will see some important aspects of the india canada relations see though there are difficulties in india canada relationship there is a scope for many areas of cooperation as well firstly in 2015 the prime minister of india visited canada and this visit elevated the bilateral relationship to a strategic partnership since then both countries have been working together to enhance cooperation in different areas that are important to both of them to facilitate this cooperation there are several mechanisms in place for dialogue between the two sides for example there are ministerial level dialogues on strategic trade and energy matters as well as joint working groups for specific sectors these mechanisms allow the two countries to discuss and collaborate on various issues then in terms of trade and commercial relations india and canada have an annual dialogue between their trade ministers to review and strengthen the economic ties they are also engaged in negotiations for a comprehensive economic partnership agreement this agreement aims to enhance trade in goods services investment and trade facilitation now let us talk about some examples of major items that india exports to canada and vice versa india exports items such as medicines garments diamonds chemicals and petroleum oils on the other hand canada exports items like pulses fertilizers newsprint aircraft aviation equipments and copper ores to india then in field of nuclear cooperation the relationship between india and canada faced difficulties after india conducted a nuclear test in 1974 however in 2010 they signed a nuclear cooperation agreement which came into force in 2013 this agreement allows for civil nuclear cooperation between the two countries india and canada also collaborate in the field of science and technology they focus on promoting industrial research and development this can lead to the development of new intellectual property processes prototypes or products the two countries have joint research projects in healthcare agri biotech waste management and coal climate studies furthermore india and canada have a history of cooperation in space related activities as well they collaborate on space science earth observation satellite launch services and even ground support for space missions for instance isro and the canadian space agency that is csa have signed agreements in the past and isro has launched canadian nano satellites then in terms of security and defense india and canada collaborate closely in international forums such as united nations commonwealth and g20 they also have robust cooperation on counter terrorism issues through the joint working group on counter terrorism then education is another important area of mutual interest india is now the top source of foreign students studying in canada the two countries have a memorandum of understanding on higher education which was renewed in 2018 also 
people to people ties between india and canada are very strong canada hosts a large indian diaspora with over 1.6 million people of indian origin living there this diaspora has made significant contributions in various sectors including politics there are 22 members of parliament of indian origin in the canadian house of commons lastly during covid-19 pandemic there was cooperation between india and canada canada operated special charter flights to repatriate stranded canadian nationals from india india also supplied medicines such as paracetamol and hydroxychloroquine in tablets india supplied protective equipment like face masks and eye shields to canada also there is the cannabis medicine project this project involves collaboration between the two countries in the field of medical cannabis research so in summary tension between india and canada is currently due to a pro kalistani parade so india is concerned about canada's support for separatist elements then we saw the role of indian diaspora and the challenges in the current canadian political landscape we also saw some of the areas of cooperation between the two countries that's all with this let us move on to our next article yesterday our defense minister stated that un should be more democratic and representative he says so because in his opinion india which is the most populous nation is not a permanent member of the un security council so he insisted that the time had come for the un and its bodies to enable india a permanent membership and act according to the current realities of the age so in this context let us quickly learn about the un security council in prelims perspective the security council was established by un charter in 1945 it is one of the six principal organs of the united nations the five other organs of the united nations are the general assembly the trusteeship council the economic and social council the international court of justice and the secretariat its primary responsibility is to work to maintain international peace and security some of the other functions of the un security council are listed here you can go through it the headquarters of un security council is situated at new york talking about its members see the council has 15 members the five permanent members and 10 non permanent members elected for two year terms the five permanent members are the united states the russian federation france china and the united kingdom each year the general assembly elects five non permanent members out of 10 in total for a two year term the 10 non permanent seats are distributed on a regional basis the council's presidency is a capacity that rotates every month among its 15 members now let us see about voting powers each member of the security council has one vote decisions of the security council on the matters are made by an affirmative vote of nine members including the concurring votes of the permanent members a no vote that is veto power from one of the five permanent members can block the passage of the resolution any member of united nations which is not a member of security council may participate without vote in the discussion of any question brought before the security council wherever the later considers that the interest of that member is specifically affected that's all with this let us move on to our next topic according to the news article the authorities of assam's national register of citizens have laid off 157 contractual workers who were engaged in the exercise to update the list of citizens in this context let us quickly go through assam's nrc Firstly know that the National Register of Citizens is a register which contains names of all genuine Indian citizens at present only the state of Assam has got such a register this exercise may be extended to other states as well on that line Nagaland is already creating a similar database called the Register of Indigenous Inhabitants and when you take the center it is planning to create a national population register which is said to be containing the demographic and biometric details of citizens Now you may wonder why only Assam has such a register. See this is because the state of Assam witnessed a large scale illegal migration from the erstwhile East Pakistan that is from the present day Bangladesh after 1971. As we know the migration of people not only affects the demography of the state but it also leads to loss of opportunities. The same thing happened in Assam as well and it posed a heavy burden on the state's resource for the people who are native of Assam. This led to the famous Assam agitation that happened between 1979 and 1985. This agitation aimed for an infiltration free Assam. Remember this movement ended up with the signing of Assam Accord. Now coming back as I told you earlier the NRC in Assam is basically a list of Indian citizens living in the state or you can also say that the register sets out to identify foreign nationals in the state. See the NRC was prepared only once in 1951. that is after the completion of 1951 census 
and the register had the particulars of all persons enumerated during that census. On talking about NRC updation, see NRC updation process started in Assam in 2015 with an objective to keep its ethnic uniqueness unaltered. NRC updation is nothing but the process of enlisting the names of those persons or their descendants whose names have appeared in any of the electoral rolls up to 1971 or in the 1951 NRC or in any other admissible documents stipulated that would prove their presence in Assam or in any part of India on or before 24th March 1971. So, these are the eligibility criteria for a person to be included under the NRC. Please have a look at it. And as per the latest order of Honorable Supreme Court, these are also the eligibility criteria for a person to be included under the NRC. And as we know, citizenship is a subject of union list. So therefore, the policy decisions, guidelines and funds for NRC updation are provided by the central government. But however, its implementation is done through the state government missionary only. And it is done under the guidance of Register General of India and the state coordinator. A secretary rank officer of the Assam government will be assisting the Register General of India in this regard. Just have in mind that the provisions of NRC updation in Assam are the Citizenship Act 1955 and the Citizenship Registration of Citizens and Issue of National Identity Card Rules 2003. That's all regarding this topic. Now let us move on to our next article. Take a look at this news article. This news article talks about an advertisement by Zomato which featured a Dalit character from the film Lagan being used as a table, lamp, watering can and so on. Even though the food delivery platform has now withdrawn the advertisement, the National Commission for Scheduled Caste that is NCSC has issued a notice to Zomato founder and CEO Mr. Deependra Goyal. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through NCSC in prelims perspective. Firstly, know that National Commission for Scheduled Caste is a constitutional body set up under the Article 338 of Indian Constitution. This is a new commission that came into existence in 2004 and was inserted into constitution by the 89th Amendment Act of 2003. It is because previously there was a single commission as National Commission for Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes which has been now bifurcated into National Commission for Scheduled Caste and National Commission for Scheduled Tribes. The objective of the NCSC is to oversee the implementation of various safeguards provided to scheduled caste under the constitution. Further, under Article 338, constitution has assigned these duties and functions to the National Commission for Scheduled Caste. First, to investigate and monitor all matters relating to the safeguards provided for the scheduled caste under the constitution or under any other law or order and to evaluate the working of such safeguards. Second, NCSC has to incur into specific complaints with respect to the deprivation of rights and safeguards of scheduled castes. Next, it participates and advises in the planning process of socio-economic development of scheduled castes and to evaluate the progress of their development under the union and state. It also needs to present reports to president upon the working of those safeguards either annually or otherwise. Such reports should contain the recommendations regarding the measures to be taken by the union and states for the effective implementation of safeguards and other measures for the protection, welfare and socio-economic development of scheduled caste etc. Now to undertake these duties and functions, NCSC has been given all powers of a civil court with respect to these matters. Most importantly, constitution provides for mandatory consultation by the union and state governments with the commission on all major policy matters affecting scheduled caste. This is in accordance with the Article 338 Clause 9. So, this helps the Commission to keep track of all major policy decisions, legislative or executive action taken by Government of India or any other state government. Further, as per Clause 10, the Commission is also required to discharge similar functions with regard to the Anglo-Indian community as it does with respect to the scheduled castes. That is, the Commission has to investigate all matters relating to the constitutional and other legal safeguards for the Anglo-Indian community and report to the President. Coming to NCSC's composition, it consists of a chairperson, a vice chairperson and three other members. They are appointed by the President. Their conditions of service and tenure of office are as per 2004 rules according to which chairperson shall be appointed from amongst eminent socio-political workers belonging to scheduled castes and at least one member shall be appointed from amongst women. That's all regarding this topic. With this, let us move on to our next part of discussion that is the prelims practice question discussion. Now let us take up our first question. How many of the actions given above can be reported to the certain? Note that any person can report to certain regarding identity theft, attack on critical infrastructure or information, 
attack on e-governance application, denial of service attack or spreading of a spyware. Here all of these actions can be reported to certain. So the answer here is option D, all 5. With this let us move on to our next question. This is a statement based question. Statement 1 says that all non-permanent members of United Nations Security Council has the right to vote. This statement is correct. From our discussion we know that UN Security Council has 15 members and be clear of this each member of the Security Council has one vote and note that decisions of the Security Council on matters made by an affirmative vote of 9 members. This is including the concurring votes of the permanent members or the P5. And an important point is that a no vote from one of the 5 permanent members blocks the passage of the resolution. Statement 2 says that India is a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. This statement is correct. Even though both the statements are correct, statement 2 does not explain statement 1. So the correct answer for this question is option B. Both statement 1 and 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. With this let us move on to our next question. In this question, two statements about National Commission for Scheduled Castes are given and we have to find the correct ones. Statement 1 says that constitution mandates for consultation by the union and state governments with the NCSC on all major policy matters affecting scheduled caste. This statement is correct. Such consultation is mandatory under constitution. It is mandated under article 338 class 9. Statement 2 says that National Commission for Scheduled Caste is required by the constitution to discharge similar functions with regard to the other backward classes and the Anglo Indian community as it does with respect to scheduled caste. This statement is incorrect. See before 2018 under article 338 class 10 NCSC was required to discharge similar functions to both OBCs and Anglo Indian community. But the 102nd amendment act 2018 omitted OBC from the article. So currently national commission for scheduled caste discharges similar functions to Anglo Indian community only. So the correct answer for this question is option A one only. This is your quiz question. Think well and post the correct answer in the comment section. This is your mains practice question for the day. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post them in comment section as well. With this we have come to end of our discussion. You can share your thoughts in comment section. If you find this video useful, hit the like button, share it with fellow aspirants and don't forget to subscribe Shankar IS Academy's YouTube channel for more UPSC related content. Thanks for listening patiently. Have a nice day.